is now a really good time to buy? If you've ever asked yourself this question, and let's be honest, you have, you're not alone. It's the investor's eternal anxiety. We're all terrified of being that person who buys right before a crash, then spends the next decade kicking ourselves. But here's a thought experiment that you might change everything. What if you had the absolute worst timing imaginable? What if for 30 straight years, you invested exactly one lakh every single year at the market's peak? Not just bad timing, cosmically, mathematically, perfectly terrible timing. Today, I'm breaking down this analysis that tests this exactly this scenario. And I reckon that the, the results will kill most of your timing anxiety. So let's dive in. Here's how the study worked. We simulated three investors, same time period, 1995 to August of 2025. That's three decades. Each puts in one lakh once per year into the Nifty 500 total return index. That's 30 lakhs invested over 30 years. First, the lucky investor who somehow always buys at the year's absolute low. This is the fantasy, the person who has a crystal ball perfect foresight. Second, the regular investor, no timing strategy at all, just buys on the first trading day of each year. Kind of boring, but systematic. The person who doesn't try to outsmart the market. And third, our star of the show, the unlucky investor. This person has a curse. They always, always buy at the year's highest close. Every single year for 30 years. Imagine that. Here's how their investment timing looks like visually. As you can see, the lucky investor always manages to buy the year's low. The unlucky investor does the opposite. So what happened? Let's look at where each investor ended up. The lucky investor with their perfect timing turned 30 lakhs into 6.4 crores, which is nice. The regular investor ended with 5.2 crores, which is again solid. And our cursed friend, the unlucky investor at 4 crores. Wait, let me say that again. Even with the worst possible timing, the buying at the peak every single year for three decades, you'd have turned 30 lakhs into four crores. Here's how their outcomes look in terms of wealth multiplied and annualized return. So the investor with the worst possible timing still ends up with an annualized return of 13.7%. It's meaningfully lower than perfect or regular timing, sure, but it's not the catastrophic difference that our instincts lead us to believe. Now, here's where it gets interesting. We also simulated 10,000 investors who each picked a random trading day every year. No strategy, no timing, just whenever. So look at this distribution. It's, it's kind of tight, really tight. The median return was around 15%. And 90% of all these random investors landed between 14.7 and 15.3%. Think about what that is telling us. The vast middle, the place where almost everyone lands when they're not trying to game the system clusters in a narrow band. The regular investor sits near the lower edge at 14.7%. The unlucky investor at 13.7% is a left tail outcome by construction. Remember, we deliberately engineered the worst case. Translation, you don't need clear ones. You need a rule and the discipline to follow it. Quick sidebar, does it matter which month you invested? The, we, we tested that too. If you invested every year in the same month, the best month gave you about 15.3% returns, which is November or December. The worst gave you about 147 which was March. The spread just about 0.6 percentage points. So the calendar games are clearly noise. They're not where the game is won. So most people find this counterintuitive. Why doesn't bad timing destroy you? There's two forces at work. First is positive drift. Over long periods, equities rise more often than they fall. That's not optimism, it's the historical pattern of productive economies. A one-time 5 or 10% entry mistake is loud and painful when it happens, but it gets diluted year after year by the growth that follows. The, the market doesn't care about your entry price. It keeps moving. Second, repeated cash flows. You're not making one bet and walking away. You're adding money every year for three decades. 30 separate inflows keep re-weighting your portfolio. One lucky purchase or unlucky purchase can't define the endpoint. The schedule, the habit of showing up is what defines it. That histogram we saw earlier, that tight cluster, that's these two forces in action. The market's upward bias and your discipline contribution compress the range of outcomes. So if timing is in the game, what is? Here are some, some of the first order levers that really move the needle. Start early. Another year of compounding beats another year of waiting for the right moment. 
time in the market trumps timing the market. And yes, I know that's become a tad phrase, but the data here gives it teeth. Increase the contribution, stepping up from 1 lakh to 1. 1.5 lakhs per year, 1.5 lakhs per year, that matters more than trying to nail the perfect entry. Automate, automate the rule, SIPs, schedule rebalances, these turn intention into default action. You remove the emotional decision from the equation. And finally, hold a mix that you can live with. Equities for growth, high quality debt for stability, rebalance by rule, not by move. The goal isn't to avoid volatility, it's to avoid panic selling during volatility. Now let's be clear about what this study doesn't claim. The next 30 years won't mirror the last 30. Market conditions change, the specific returns will be different, but the ordering of strategies, the principle that consistency beats timing, that's the point. Sequence risk is real. A deep drawdown early in your investing journey does feel worse than the same drop later. The study doesn't eliminate that psychological reality, but steady contributions and diversification mitigate significantly. And yes, this is based on a total return index, which evolves by design. Companies get added and removed. This reflects the investable market, not a frozen snapshot. That's actually a feature, not a bug. And finally, what's one thing to walk away with? Perfect timing helps. You won't get it. You don't need it. And this is the surprising part. Even the worst timing doesn't hurt as much as you fear it will. Over three decades of real market data, a boring rule to keep buying regularly, even with disastrous timing luck, would have built wealth that comfortably outpaced inflation and fixed deposits. If you must optimize something, optimize what you actually control, when you start, how much you add, and whether you stick to the plan. The calendar can argue with itself. Thanks for watching. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully. Past performance may or may not be sustained in future and is not a guarantee of any future returns.